welcome to my channel, Edible Thoughts Makes. My name is Stephanie, and this channel is where I share with you my works in progress, finished projects, things I'm cooking up, books I'm reading, funny things my kids may say. My hope is that as you watch this episode and the previous episodes, that you find some inspiration along the way. This is episode 120, and we are in the middle of January year 2024. I'm coming to you from a frigid, sunny winter day in Minnesota where I live with my husband and our two young children. It was, I think, minus 25 Fahrenheit with wind chill earlier this morning, and that's somewhere in the mid 30s below zero Celsius, I believe. So, Arctic blast is here. Thankfully, there is some snow on the ground from earlier. It is not very much, but it is enough to co cover the grass and provide a little bit of wintry, beautiful scenery. And it's just much brighter with the snow than if there wasn't any snow. And I feel like if it's going to be this cold, there should be some snow on the ground. <laughs> So things are good here. It has only been a week since we last chatted because I had a ton of finished projects to catch you up on last time since it had been, I think, six weeks prior to that that I had a sit down project update type of video. And so today the plan was to share with you a lot of the works in progress that I didn't have a chance to share last time. Well, there were a lot of projects last time that were close to being finishing finished there were, start that again. There were a lot of projects from last time that were works in progress, but were close to being finished. So I did get them finished for this episode. And since then, there have been several new cast ons. I don't know if these still exist right now, but I distinctly remember there was like an advertisement for lights that were like clap on, clap off lights. So if you clapped, they would turn on. And if you clapped, they would turn off. So every time I think of casting on and casting off, I always think of that jingle or advertisement because I think, you know, cast off, cast on. <laughs> anyway, if you know what I'm talking about, comment below. If you don't know what I'm talking about, we'll just move on. <laughs> Things are good here. I will give you a little bit of an overview if you are new, a big warm welcome to you and a big warm welcome to you if you're coming back. So I usually organize my videos with a little um, vlog in the beginning, which is anywhere from uh, like a couple of minutes to five minutes of things that just cozy scenes, maybe if we've gone hiking, some footage from that. There's not been hiking here because it's been so cold. It's like freeze your face off cold right now. So, but yeah, there'll be some scenes from stuff like that in the beginning. And then we go into an intro welcome section and then usually a finished project section and then works in progress and then eats and reads, stuff that I've been cooking, baking, stuff I've been reading. And then sometimes a food for thought where there'll be a question that maybe has been on my mind or something I just, you know, have been thinking about and want to share with you all. And yeah, and then that's usually the general um, overview of how my videos go. I do include closed captioning for all of my videos, so you'll click on that CC button. If I speak too fast or too slow for your preferences, you can also adjust the speed here on YouTube. And I use Ravelry for all of my projects, and that will also be in the description box below this video. Sometimes you have to click on show more or an arrow to get that to expand. And I do have links to designers, makers, things like that, that I talk about also in the description box below this video. I do include the links to videos that I talk about certain projects in the Ravelry project pages of those projects if I have talked about them. So it'll be listed as a work in progress chat or a finished project chat. Uh, so if Ravelry is accessible to you, you can also look there if you are wondering about a certain project in the past or yeah things like that. So we have several finished projects and a lot of works in progress to talk about today. So let's get started. The first thing I will share with you today is to talk about just briefly what I am wearing here. I mentioned it in the previous episode, so if you want details, go to episode 119. What I am wearing is the Highline Henley. It is a pattern by Tori Yu, and I tested it back in November. It was released in December, early December, I think, of 2023. It is a lovely Henley that is knit in sport weight or DK weight yarn. I think it's written for 
DK weight, but I knit mine in a sport weight yarn that's very lofty. This is Pearl Soho's Good Wool, and I used Fresh Loganberry and Coastline Gray, and I just really like the low contrast stripes in mine, and the detail of the Henley here is so special. I feel like I don't, well, I don't really have many Henleys um, in my wardrobe of clothes and the buttons here are really special because they are made by my husband they are the first buttons he has ever made and since i have some cardigans in mind for the coming year he will have a lot more <laughs> buttons to make i told him he could just make a whole bunch and then i can sort out by size maybe to find the ones that match best but yeah i figured that might be a little bit easier i don't know we'll just we'll just see where that goes <laughs> but yeah so i'm wearing my highline henley today and oh I'm wearing it over a dress that I sewed last year. I'm not sure it'll be super visible, but it is in a brushed cotton flannel. It is like a red, brown, pink herringbone, but it is super soft and it is a little heavier weight, which just feels so nice and cozy. And I had mashed up the hinterland and metamorphic dress by Soul Liberated. I'm not gonna take it off, but it's, it's sleeveless. And I'd made some other modifications to it as well. And I have a video here where I talked about it. I can link to it either in the description box below or in one of these corners up here so that you can take a look at that. There's no Ravelry project page for it because Ravelry is not set up for sewn items. I'm very nice and cozy in my outfit today. And yeah, let's talk about looking at my pile here. This is a camisole that I knit as a cozy underlayer. Now this is not something that I would wear just on its own out. If you do, that's great, it's just not me. But as an underlayer, it is so nice. I really, well, I really like layering. I feel like it's a great way to stay warm. But also, for me personally, I wouldn't be wearing this as a wool tank top in the summer anyway. I. I generally stay away from anything that's going to be prickly once I start sweating. And so as an underlayer, it's perfect. So the pattern. I modified the Ripple Bralette pattern by Jessie Mae Designs into a camisole. She does have a pattern for the camisole. So I had already bought the bralette pattern and it's the same gauge. And so I just made a few modifications like I omitted the band on the bottom and it starts bottom up. And I just started with the ribbing pattern and went as long as I wanted to. And then I followed the directions for the top part as is. And then I just didn't pick a size that had as much negative ease. So if you decide to knit the camisole and you don't have the bralette pattern yet, I would just recommend buying the camisole pattern, not the bralette pattern. But yeah, so I cast on the medium size for 27 inches um, for the chest circumference, which for me, bust-wise would be five inches of negative ease and it would be about no ease at my natural waist. And I did knit it 14 inches from this underarm band. Um, well, I guess opposite direction. From the cast on edge to the underarm band, it does stretch quite a bit. So then you lose the length, right? So if you aren't sure, I would always go longer than shorter because it does stretch and then you lose that length. So I did 14 inches and I have it to be, it's like past my hip bones because I wanted it to be something I could tuck into pants and it's so cozy. The yarn I used is Earl Grey Fiber Company's Silver Needle Sock, which is an 80% merino, superwash merino, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon. I don't believe she is currently dyeing any yarn and I bought this several years ago. It comes in 382 yards for 100 grams, and I started out with 102.3 grams, and I know I can knit this in 100 grams, and I did. So I finished with two grams remaining. And yeah, I really, really like it. This is my third one, which is also how I know how much yardage I need for each section, and that way I can use up as much of it as possible. This is knit on US 4 or 3.5 millimeter needles, which is what's called for in the pattern. And then for the straps, it's this like, I don't know what you call it. So it's like a flat I cord. I do it on double pointed needles and I use bamboo ones and I go down a needle size to a US3 because I always feel like my I cords are really, really loose. 
And I switched to bamboo for that part because I didn't want to be dropping stitches. So the rest of it I knit on metal needles, but the straps I knit on bamboo needles. And yeah, I'm super happy with how this turned out. I also love the speckles. The speckles are really evenly distributed and the overall color is like a soft pink lavender. And then the speckles are like a darker purple and gold and orangey brown. I'm gonna try to hold it up close and see how well it'll focus so that you can admire those beautiful speckles. And the other thing is I knew with this fabric blend, it is not something that I would want a lot of friction because I knew it would pill really easily. So it also works really well as an underlayer camisole that doesn't have a lot of friction compared to like socks per se. And it's so next to skin soft. It is really, really drapey, super, super soft. And it's really warm. So even though there are no sleeves, even though it's a V-neck and that top section is open, I feel like when I wear this underneath like a flannel or a sweatshirt or a sweater, it is just so cozy and so comfortable. And I already have yarn picked out for my next one that is in the same base and I'll just knit it exactly the same as this. So you'll see it sometime in the future. The next thing I'm going to share with you is this super cute little itty bitty shawl. This is the half granny square shawl. It is a free pattern and I crocheted it using a G hook or four millimeter hook. And the yarns in here are all Knit Picks Hawthorne and I held it double. So the colors are Peach Melba, which is this cream with gold and orangey red speckles. And then this golden yellow is compass. And then this uh, maybe jewel tone tealy green color, I believe is Poseidon. And then this light peachy pink is Daphne. And then this golden green color, I don't remember what it's called. Um, maybe I have it written down somewhere else. Don't remember, sorry. All of this yarn, I used up whatever was left. And some of these colors have been used in multiple other projects already, so it was super satisfying to just crochet them all up. They were held double, and then I just did a magic knot to attach each one. And so there, there aren't really ends to weave in, but since I don't trim my magic knot into like really, really short ends, cause it makes me nervous, I end up with these little itty bitty spots that I just uh, tuck in later. So I'll just use a little crochet hook or a yarn needle, depending on how long it is. And then I'll just tuck it into the stitches so that they don't pop out. I might be able to tuck this one in just with my fingers, but maybe not. It won't be as tidy, but there we go. And so with this one, I had all these more springy colors and I put them all in and then I realized the rest of my colors are all pretty dark and I didn't want there to be a harsh divide between the light and the dark. So I just decided to end it. This is for one of my daughters. She had wanted a big shawl. So this one is obviously not a big shawl and I've started another one and that one will be big. But this one is kind of fun because you can actually wear it in a like a bandana style kerchief type of thing where you tie it just at the ends and the back. I'm gonna turn around so you can see it better. Hopefully, let's see. So I just double knotted it in the back and it can be worn like with it in the center or off to the side. I think it's actually really cute and it does have some warmth to it around the neck and it's actually really soft and there's a bit of structure to it being that this yarn held double. Um, it just, it's not like soup, it's drapey, but there's still structure where it's not super floppy. So that's kind of nice too. But I figured she can wear it like this 
or she can use it for her dolls. It's a beautiful doll shawl and she can attach the front with like a hair clip and it would keep it from moving around. So this I'm saving for a birthday. I think she's gonna absolutely love it. And the amount of yarn I used was 100 grams total. So maybe if you have 100 grams of yarn remaining from other projects, maybe this is something you wanna give a try. Again, it's from a free pattern and it's super easy. Really, you just need like the starting point to get you going and then it's just the same thing for every single row from there. And it's really fun, it's reversible, there's no front or back, and it can be a really fun way to create stripes or color blocking. Again, I just crocheted each yarn until it ran out, so I didn't do any management that way. I do feel like if you want to have some management to it, choose the yarn that you have the least of and do that first because it's going to keep growing and use more and more yarn with each row, so save the ones that maybe are bigger for later so that they don't use up as much surface area in the front or you can it's a fun way to like manage your stripes too if that's what you want to do but generally what i do is i'll put the smaller ones in the beginning and then the bigger ones um, farther out so that the stripes aren't super super uh unbalanced but really it doesn't it doesn't really matter so this is done super cute i love it the next two finished projects are socks. I'm going to start with the ones I think, yeah, I'll start with the ones I knit for my husband. And I am on a mission to fill his sock drawer. I talked about it in the previous episode. He does have socks that I've knit him since 2019, and I'm just going to fill that drawer. <laughs> That's my plan this year. And so I want to average a pair a month, and if there's more or less, it's not really a big deal. I'm just saying, an average of a pair a month. And yeah, so this is the second pair. The first one, as you may recall, I started and finished before 2024 started. I was just on a roll. Um, also, I wanted to point out, not point out, also I wanted to note that socks, especially ones that have no counting in them, like no patterning, are really good project to have when you're playing board games, especially with little kids and you don't time everybody's turn. And so some turns take a while and you don't wanna hurry anybody. And so I just sit there and knit on my socks and it's great. So over winter break, I got a lot of sock knitting done because we played a lot of board games and some of them took a really long time. <laughs> and it was just fine because I had socks to knit on. Okay, so these socks, they're a little loose on the blockers because they've been worn already. But here we go. This is pair number two for 2024. And these are based off of the High Desert Socks, which is a pattern by Lindsay Fowler. And I've knit so many of these, uh, probably over a dozen. And I've done it this way before as well for a pair of socks I knit for my dad a few years ago. And basically what you do is you take self-striping yarn, and then another yarn that you want to pair it with. And so for this one, I brought over the yarn that I have remaining so you could see what it looks like beforehand uh, because sometimes it can be hard to picture what it looks like before things are marled together. So uh, both of these yarns are from 2020 and I only mention that because I know Knit Picks has changed um, this line of self-striping yarn to have thinner width stripes and so this is the older version it's 75 25 superwash merino wool and nylon it comes in 50 gram balls and this one is called lost lakes and it has like blues and greens in it and then the yarn i paired it with is also from 2020 it is dyed by julie of sweet sparrow yarns and it is a tweed base and it's like very soft, pale, blue and green and tweed. And it's also a fingering weight yarn. So this is what I paired together. And this is what I got. And so I did have the self-striping yarn start in the same spot so I would have matching socks. I saw that this blue, dark blue section, the two stripes there were pretty similar. So I actually wanted to put that for this heel flap and gusset or the heel flap and turn section. And it worked out just right and finished right before I started the gusset portion. 
so it looks like a contrast heel color even though I didn't cut any yarn and so basically I just had my starting cast on tail to weave in and my finished tail to weave in and that was it and that was really satisfying I cast on the adult medium for him I used us 3 or 3.25 millimeter needles and that's what's recommended in the pattern and I used a total of 65 grams of the tweed yarn and 71 grams of the self striping sometimes I think the yarn weights are a little bit different and uh, so you end up using a little bit more a little bit less of the other one and I'm just really happy with how they turned out I did knit the cuff slightly longer than what's stated in the pattern I think the leg might be about the same I don't quite remember and yeah there's a little bit of ribbing in it which makes it really comfortable and gives it some elasticity and stretch and these are great socks to wear in hiking boots and as house socks and yeah so I'm very very pleased with how these turned out I love the colors I think they're so so perfect for the season like they've got that wintry cool vibe to them and uh, they're super cozy and you've got stripes marling and tweed so yeah I love how these turned out the next pair of socks I'm going to share with you are a pair I knit for myself these were my Christmas Eve cast on oh I love them so this yarn I've had I think for a year or two as well and this is by Michelle of Woolens and Nosh it is from a set I I feel like she doesn't do them anymore it's called a kiss set I believe it stood for keep it simple stripes or something like that and the sock set would have like a 70 gram or 80 gram like an 80 gram main color and a 20 gram contrast color I think that's what it was and it would be in her superwash Corydale nylon sock base which is a three ply it's nice and round and I I really like it so this colorway is Christmas at Orchard House and it came with this cranberry red contrast color and then the stripes are this nice jewel toned green a dusty mauvey pink and a light cream with a hint of pink in it and I'm gonna hold it closer so you can get a nice view of the colors and so it's a three color repeat and then I did a shadow wrap heel and for these I did use a US 1.5 um, which is a 2.5 millimeter needle because the yarn kind of borders on like a heavier fingering weight light sport weight yarn for me and it's just more comfortable on my hands and I really like the fabric that knits up I get eight stitches by 10 rounds for my gauge for one inch and so I cast on 56 stitches for myself I like my socks to have more negative ease if I use a US 1 I'll cast on 60 stitches typically but if I'm using a one and a half then I cast on 56 stitches and I'm just so pleased with how these turned out and if you want like a similar vanilla sock pattern then go to Denise of Earth Tones Girls Sock Exploration Shadow Wrap Heel Socks and I did knit mine a lot longer but I think in general is about the same and yeah I love how these turned out I ended up using a total of 73 grams so I used about 59 grams of the main color and about 15 grams of the contrast color so I do have a little bit remaining not enough to knit a pair of fingerless mitts but I think what I could do is combine it with another yarn and maybe knit shorty socks or just get creative and do like the striping either just in the leg or just in the foot and then kind of like mix and match things throughout for the contrast color of eight grams left which I think eight grams left I can do for heels another set of shadow wrap heels because these heels used six grams total so with eight grams I can do that again for the two cuffs I used 8.6 grams so if I wanted to do cuffs again in this color I think I would just have to do like one round less on each one which would be fine but yeah so that's where I'm at and I love these socks they come up like mid-calf and are super comfy to have over leggings all right let's move on to the works in progress I think well I'm trying to think what I'm going to start with I think I'm going to start with this one I'm so excited about it I'm a, I'm really excited about all of them if you watched the previous episode uh, at the end I had mentioned 
that I have so many <laughs> new projects either coming or about to be started and I'm just so excited about them. And there's just something about having that energy and excitement of creating new things and being excited about working on different projects that is really fulfilling. And I'm excited to share that with you today. The first one I'm going to share with you is using my yarn from the Farmer's Daughter Fibers Suck Squad subscription. Say that 10 times fast. This is my fourth year participating in this subscription and it is so much fun. It's a monthly subscription for the year and I believe you can start and stop whenever. And the yarn you receive is a mystery in the sense that you don't know exactly what the colorway will look like. Candice and her team rotate through three different bases and they have not been the same every year. There's usually, I think, one different one from the previous year. And so those will rotate throughout. And then there's also an inspiration for each month. There's a calendar that comes with the year and there's an illustration each month that is where the inspiration for the colorway comes from. And there's usually a theme. This year, we have this journal that is a monthly calendar inside and the inspiration comes from these illustrations and they are absolutely beautiful. They're earthly, earthly, earthy woodland type of illustrations and these are the three yarns that are included in this year's subscription and there is a 100 grams of sock yarn plus a mini skein and there's just so many exciting things coming i'm going to share with you what january's looks like it is a luna moth and what i have cast on is not a pair of socks because you don't have to knit a pair of socks with sock yarn or fingering weight yarn. This month's yarn is the Bighorn Sock Base, which I find to be a light fingering weight yarn. And it is a 75% 19.5 micron superwash merino and 25% nylon at 463 yards for 100 grams. And so that's pretty light fingering weight. And I'm gonna say this yarn smells so good. I don't know what it is. And all yarn has some smell to it, but this one, it smells really, really good. Oh, before I open this bag, I just wanna share it with you because if you've been here for a while, you'll know that I like to match my projects with my project bags, which is absolutely not a necessity, but something that's part of the process for me and I really enjoy it. This is a bag that I did not make. If you've been here for a while, you'll also know that I sew a lot of my own project bags. This is a beautiful sister bag. Hopefully the tag will show up here and focus. They are a Midwest company. I wanna say that they're in Chicago? Don't quote me, but I thought this was absolutely perfect. I'm going to untie this top part so you can see the fabric better, but it matches the yarn theme so well. In fact, I believe there are moths on here too. So I'm gonna try to hold it up so you can see the fabric better. But we've got the woodland creatures, we've got the moths, it's green. It's so, so pretty. Okay, are you ready? So this is the yarn. It is a light minty pistachio green color. It definitely airs more on tonal and there's like a little bit of light gray in it. And here, here is where I am at. I have cast on the mini mock neck tank by Jesse Made Designs, and this is my second one. I talked about the first one in the previous episode, and I've made some slight changes in this one. I did the front and the back correctly this time. I think I missed some repeats in my previous one because I'd mentioned before what happened is my back ended up lower than my front, and it just, it, something just didn't quite line up Fine. like it's very wearable still, but it's definitely not this scoopier crew neck that I have here. 
I did make some changes to this one. I think I added a couple of extra rows in the back before joining, and then I did a couple of extra rows in the front shaping before everything came together. And the other one I did not pick up for a neckline. I might do it later, I'm not sure. But this one I wanted a little bit of ribbing in the front, so that is what I did. So mine is not like a mock neck, turtleneck situation. It's more of a crew neck. And instead of going down two sizes from the main fabric needles for the ribbing, I just went down one because I didn't want it super close tight to my neck. And then I just did like half an inch of ribbing and then bound off in pattern using a double pointed needle that was two sizes bigger so to make sure it wasn't going to be too tight. I really, really like how it has been knitting up. I feel like the little bit of the grayish uh, variance in the yarn has been very evenly distributed, so I don't see any big pooling of different colors. The other major change, or not major, minor change I made is in the underarm ribbing detail, I just continued it down the side panel. I feel like that's going to give me a little more give on the sides because of all the negative ease. I think I'm still going to do a little bit of A-line shaping like I did in my first one, just so it doesn't stretch out too much as I'm knitting it to be a little bit past my hip bones and I don't want it to have like nine inches of negative ease or whatever it is. I haven't calculated exactly eight or nine inches of negative ease there if I kept it the same circumference as it is in the bust circumference. And so I'm going to do a little bit of A-line shaping just so that negative ease stretch there can be a little gentler. But yes, I am maybe halfway through the body. I have calculated how many grams I need per inch and I should be able to do okay, I think with the rest of this yarn. I think I have about 30 grams here. And if I don't have enough, I can always stripe in the mini skein, which is this beautiful bluey teal. It might be a little higher contrast than I want, but we'll see when I get there. If I don't end up doing that, I'm gonna definitely save this to go with the other ones that will come throughout the year. And that will be fun to do like a stripey project with. I'll have to see how the minis go together. But if I end up needing more length and this doesn't work, I might just look to see what other yarns I have that are more, not the same color, but can stripe in with a more subtle shift. So like the one that I used in my previous mini mock neck tank was a very neutral creamy tan, so I could use that, but there's a little more variegation in that one, so I don't know if I want that stark of a contrast there. So we'll see. I think I have like a light gray mini that was a merino yak blend from a previous sock squad year that I think could look really pretty because there's this like light gray in this fabric and so i think if i really needed to i could pull that light gray yak merino yarn which is also a light fingering weight and just blend that in for the bottom so i'm not worried about running out of yarn because there's always a way to make it work and that's what i'm going to do so super excited about this i will finish this by the end of january it is a really relaxing make and this is also something that i plan on wearing as an underlayer because Again, I don't wear wool tank tops in the summer because it's not comfortable for me that way, but I love wearing them in the colder weather underneath things because it's so nice to have that cozy layer. And when I knit it long enough, I can also tuck it into my pants so no wind is going up my shirt and it's so much better that way. So that is the first work in progress I'm gonna share with you and hopefully when we chat next, which I'm hoping to squeeze in another one at the end of January, so in two weeks, it should be finished and it'll be nice to share that with you then. The next work in progress I'm going to share with you is one that I've been wanting to start for quite some time. It is in a bag that I sewed up, I think a couple of years ago. This is one of my favorites. It has these beautiful floral thermos bottles and teacups and teapots on it and a denim boxed bottom. If you are brand new here, I do not sell my project bags. I am not a business 
and I don't follow a specific pattern or tutorial, but there are hundreds of them out there on YouTube and you can just Google it and search for drawstring project bag or tote bag. There's so many patterns out there that are free and ones that are paid for patterns. I also recommend you check out maybe your local sewing shop if you're looking for classes. Uh, some yarn shops are also sewing shops and have that option as well. And if you like in-person instruction, I feel like that is a great way to go. You support your local business and you learn how to do the things you want to do. So yeah, this is one of my favorites and I'm going to show you what's inside. I'm so excited about this. Okay, this yarn is super bright. This is Pearl Soho's Hedgerow Base, and this is the color Fuchsia Rose. It comes in 93% non-superwash merino, 3.5% cashmere, 3.5% mulberry silk, and it is 243 yards for 100 grams. I feel like you can knit this up in DK or worsted. It is a dry yarn that is toothy, and has beautiful rainbow multicolored um, tweed throughout. And it is a delight to knit with. I have used two other colorways of this yarn to knit slipovers and the fabric blocks out so smooth and it's very lightweight. There are no gaps in between. I feel like it just, it's one of those yarns that definitely will cling to each other because it's toothier, but it creates such a nice cohesive fabric and I really, really like it. And it's warm. It may not be next to skin soft for everybody. Again, it is drier and toothier, but as an outer layer, I feel like it is really comfortable. So I'm gonna share with you what I have started. I am knitting the Building Blocks Cardi by Amy Schur. As you know, I knit a lot of Amy Schur's patterns. Actually, I should not say as you know, because if you are new here, you may not know, and that's not very nice of me to assume that. So I take that back. I have knit a lot of Amy Schur's patterns. I really appreciate their size inclusivity and their shape inclusivity, thoughtfulness that goes into each of the patterns. And this is the start of my building blocks, Cardi. So I mentioned that I am really interested in knitting more cardigans. I just find them so wearable. It is a bottom up pattern. And I'm just currently working it flat. The ribbing on the bottom is done and now I'm on the stockinette portion. And I just love how those tweed flecks are showing up. And especially on cold gray winter days, having something so bright and cheerful to work on is just a delight. I'm really enjoying how this is knitting up. I'm using US 8 or five millimeter needles and it's just back and forth right now, which is also a really, really nice knit to have when I am reading or doing something that I cannot be counting at the same time. <laughs> so this is also a good board game knit, but yeah, I'm no deadline for this. I'm just plugging away at it. And hopefully I will have inserted a photo here on the screen from Amy's images so you can see what it looks like. And similar to a lot of their other patterns, there are different views. You can do pockets, you can just do it more like a vest and you can do whatever length sleeve you want. You can do it cropped, you can do it full length. Uh, yeah, so I'm planning on doing mine probably like high hip and I have cast on the first size to give me about seven inches of positive ease in the chest circumference and about that's four inches of positive ease around my hips. So yeah, I'm planning on a high hip length. It is going to be a cardigan, full length sleeves. Not sure about pockets yet. We'll see about that part when I get there, but I'm really excited about it. I just, I love it. I think it's gonna go well with so many things. Even though it's a bright color, it's got all those multicolored specks in it. It's gonna look great with jeans. It's gonna look great with corduroy pants. I'm so excited about it. Alrighty, the next two projects I'm gonna share with you are crochet projects. I had alluded to them earlier. They are the half granny square shawl and <laughs> I feel like I need to put in a little, well not need to, I feel like I want to put in a little note here. So I am not like a blanket knitter, crocheter. I just, I find it super daunting to have this ginormous thing that I have to have done. And if it's not done in that shape or not shape dimensions, then it doesn't really work to cover a, a bed, right? If it's like a blanket. Lap size blanket, totally different. But 
I feel like this is the same idea, but at a much more tangible, feasible, I think feasible is the word I'm looking for, way for me. Because I can stop whenever and it can still be usable, hence that doll shawl earlier. But also I don't have to have exact amounts of anything and I can create like a beautiful color story and a beautiful color palette. And there's just a lot more leeway to be flexible and well, you can do that with a blanket too. Anyway, this is what works for me. And maybe a blanket is daunting to you. So maybe a shawl would be less daunting. <laughs> And you can not, you can wear it as like a scarf too, or whatever you want. It, anyway, let's, let me get the bag. So this is another bag that I sewed up several years ago. It is a very big one, because I think I used the width of the fat quarter and just cut it in half. And I really like this fabric. It looks like paper flowers. And on the bottom, it's, like a Kaufman linen cotton blend. And I just really, really like it. And this one, I had done one of those like top drawstring things to it. I don't know what it's called, but essentially it gives you more room because if you do the drawstring right on the top, it cinches everything in. And that was not gonna work in a bag that's as wide as this one. And so I needed to create this top portion, which then still cinches. And if I have a lot of stuff in here, then you basically get extra room, so. I have the two granny square shawls in here. I'm gonna show you the first one here, which is almost done. Here we go. Oh, this is so beautiful. I just love the colors. Once again, I am crocheting each color until it runs out and then just joining it by magic knot to the next one. You can search on Google for magic knot. There's a lot of tutorials out there for it, but I just love how these colors are turning out. Uh, the yarns I'm using are worsted weight, DK weight, fingering weight held double, and yeah, so much fun. I love how magical this one looks. I just feel like the colors really go well together. I'm going to slowly try to show you it up close. Okay, I think, I think we got it all in there. And let me see, I haven't weighed anything yet, so I'll just weigh it at the end when I'm finished. So I know approximately how much yarn I used and the blocked out dimensions, just to give myself an idea of um, how much yarn I might need to set aside if I were to make you know, a next one and for what size. And this one, I, I'm looking in my notebook here to try to figure out which crochet hook size I used. Oh, you know what? I'm so silly. I can't, I can't find the page, but I can't find the hook. That's in the bag. Here we are. It is an e-hook, which is a 3.5 millimeter hook. So with this one being almost done, I just want it to be big enough that my daughter can drape it over her shoulders while she's reading. And so yeah, I think I'm getting close to being finished on that. So I started another one for my other daughter. I have two daughters and um, they both love all the things I make them. They are both very, very knit and crochet worthy. And since I only have one three and a half millimeter hook, this one I am using a G or a four millimeter hook. And yes, I could get another three and a half millimeter hook, but instead I'm just gonna use what I got. Just started this one, so it's itty bitty right now, but it's so cute. I've got these lovely earthy colors on it right now. The top portion is the two point something grams remaining from my ripple camisole. And then this next, Yarn here, I don't remember exactly what it's called, but it's from a pair of socks I knit, and I think that was also less than five grams. And then this next one, I think had something to do with prairie groundhogs. It's from a farmer's daughter fiber sock squad yarn, also yarn remaining from some socks. 
And then I think this next one is a Malabrigo sock that I'm holding double. I don't remember what it's called, but it's got these beautiful greens and pinks. Yeah, and I'm just really loving how this is looking so far. And I will just, there's no big deadline. I'd like to have them done in the next couple of months, but again, no big deadline. And crocheting goes actually really quickly for me. So I'm not, I'm not like stressing about it, but yeah, I would like to get it done in the next couple of months. Okay, took a quick break to check on the focaccia dough that I have going for tonight. I'm pretty excited about that. I've been making focaccia maybe once a month and it's just so easy and so good. Like the, what is it? The ratio of how much work you have to put in it, put into it to how like delicious and amazing it is afterwards is so worth it because there's not much work involved and it comes out great. I don't think I've had any failures of it yet. Cross your fingers. Uh, yeah, I probably shouldn't have said that because now it's gonna be awful. Anyway. We are going to start out talking about, um, okay, I'm just gonna briefly go over these because they are two test knits. And okay, Tiff Nealon and Samantha Guerin, if you are watching this, let me just tell you, you both put out a test call on the same day within like hours of each other and they are both due on the same day in March and they are both beautiful pullovers. And of course I had to uh, put in my application for both of them and now I'm knitting both of them, but they both have an eight week timeline and they're both like DK worsted and at the same gauge, I think 18 stitches for four inches. And so I'm making both of them and I'm so excited. They are both top down. One's a round yoke and one is a drop shoulder construction. But yeah, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm just gonna show you what they are and not go into super detail because they are test knits, but I do wanna show you the yarns that I am using and just kind of give you a quick sneak peek. So the first one I'm going to share with you is the Salty Air Sweater by Samantha Guerin. The yarn I am using, I purchased last spring at Pearl Soho's, um, it was like a spring cleaning sale, I think, with discontinued colors. So this color is not available. It is 100% non-superwash merino wool, and it is very much a cat paw pink. It is a very lovely heathered peachy pink color. And you may know that Pantone's color of the year is called Peach Fuzz, I think. And I'm taking it kind of liberally to be all the colors kind of around that. So theirs kind of looks a little more like a tannish pink color, but I'm like lumping in peachy pinks, peachy corals, whatever I want. <laughs> because I can, I can do whatever I want. But yes, so I've got this color going and I'm going to show you, oh, you want to see the bag it's in? It is so lovely. I've got like pinky, peachy, burgundy roses on here and a pink canvas box bottom. Oh, I just love it. And there's this like light pink floral fabric accented on the side. I feel like it gives a very romantic vibe. All right. I have started the lace yoke. I've done the neckband. I did it first because I'm comfortable with this yarn and I know how it'll behave versus like picking up for the neckband later. And I've just started this lace yoke. This tulip on here is a progress keeper by Yura of Knit Boop Studio. I just thought that since this is due in March, even though we won't have springy weather then, everybody else will, uh, it'll be nice to have in the springtime where I'm craving some of the color and it's still going to be nice and um, warm, a nice warm sweater to wear when it's cold. It's not gonna be nice and warm in March. It's going to be freezing in March, but it'll be nice to have this sweater to wear in March to feel springier. And yeah, I'm really excited about this. I tested Samantha's Salty Air Tea, I think, was it May 2022? 
I don't really remember, but somewhere in there. So this is the heavier weight version of that sweater. So I'm excited about this. And you'll probably see progress of it over the next two months, but it won't be done. It won't be released until March. So you won't see it as a finished project until the pattern is released. So I was sewing this project bag because I was going around through Joanne Fabrics and I, I couldn't let this fabric out of my mind. You ready to see it? It is a cotton flannel. So of course it's like super snuggly and cozy and it's gray. It's a light gray with these uh, bunnies on it that have moons and stars and there's these flowers on it and greenery and I just fell in love with it. I did do a boxed bottom with like a burgundy red canvas and then for my inside and drawstring in the remnants bin I had found this tan floral don't know if it's called calico or not but this really sweet fabric and I just thought it was perfect so there we go and then my sewing machine died at the end I had like six inches left to sew and it died it is a pretty old machine I mean not vintage I don't know what you call vintage it's like 40 plus years old maybe and uh, yeah it's it just it just completely died so that was unfortunate and I just hand sewed the rest and it was just fine. I think I did a great job. If I'm gonna toot my own horn, I think it's just fine. I do know how to hand sew. And so yes, I just, I just finished it off. Uh, like I mentioned, this is a drop down pattern. This one's by Tiff Nealon and it is called Woodhaven. And I have just started it. And my yarns are Linen Quill by Pearl Soho and I'm holding it double. Here is the tag. And my contrast color is rose granite. And my two main colors that I'm marling together for a very subtle color shift are baked earth and butterscotch yellow. So this yarn is 50% fine highland wool, 35% alpaca, 15% linen. I have knit with it held on its own in fingering weight sweaters and shawls, and I have also held it double in sweaters, and I really like the fabric it creates. It is 439 yards for 100 grams and held together. I feel like it works really, really nicely. So here is the rose granite color. It is kind of a... It's really hard to describe, like a pinky gray taupe. And it is heathered. And it's just a really nice neutral. Hopefully it's focusing here. And then here is baked earth, which goes into the peach fuzz family. It is a very neutral peachy color. And then butterscotch yellow is an orangey, orangey yellow, slightly yellowy orange color. And I feel like these three are a very beautiful, warm, neutral-ish palette. So these two full cakes here, these are the ones that are going to be marled together, held together for a very subtle marl. And then the contrast color is held double with itself. And I have started just started it. So I did the part of this back yoke section. I've got a rose, a blue rose progress keeper on there by Reshma of Hello Lavender. And yeah, I've just got this top back portion done so far. And I will be starting with the main color soon. And you will also just see progress of this as we go throughout. This one is also due in March. So the finished project you will see probably sometime in the middle of March. Onwards to a fun project. Well, they're all fun, but I have cast on two pairs of socks. They are for each of my daughters and they are for Valentine's Day. And I think they're gonna love it. The yarns they picked out when we went up north, I had shown some footage of that last 
uh, in the last episode. And we had stopped by a yarn store there called Yarn Harbor in, I believe it's in Duluth or Two Harbors. It's a cute little yarn shop and the kids picked out some yarns that they wanted me to knit Valentine's Day socks for them. And I have started it. And I'm so excited about these. They are so cute. Both of the yarns are the Zauber Balls. And I have never used the Zauber Ball yarn before, but I've really wanted to. They come in 100 grams, and the ones that they picked are 7525 Superwash Wool and a um, biodegradable polyamide. So I have just started. They are both knit on US 1 or 2.25 millimeter needles. And I like to knit my yarns two at a time on their own needles in tandem. And so I break my yarn or separate my yarn into two equal balls. And you can see better here on the screen how the colors shift. So every time the color shifts, I try to rotate direction when I'm winding. The one that looks a little bit bigger, that one's the original ball that I wound off of, and then the smaller one is the one that I wound. <laughs> but since the colors uh, fade and shift, I didn't really particularly worry about them starting at the same spot, and I think it's fun that way. Oh, let me show you the bag it's in. This is a bag that I bought from Tanny of Tanny Casey Company? Tanny, I don't remember what, what the exact company name is called, but she had posted um, that she had some bags remaining from some Christmas gifts I think she was making for her friends. And there are these really cool vinyl bags that you can see on the inside. And I don't have any desire to sew any of those. There's so many pieces to cut out and it's very time and labor intensive. And I just had no desire to do that. But I will support her and buy her bags and uh, yeah, support her efforts <laughs> in making it. And so uh, in December, and so in December when she posted listing, I purchased two for myself and you'll see one here today, but here it is. Isn't this delightful? So there are these sparkles in the front vinyl portion. And then I chose this one that had like pink, red and gold fabric, of course floral because I love all things floral. And it is a zippered bag. And yeah, like I mentioned, this has so many pieces to it and this binding on the side and a zipper tab. And it's just a lot of work. And thank you, Tenny, for making it. But yes, she recently had another update on it and she said she's never making them again because <laughs> it's so much work. And yes, it is a lot of work. All right, let me show you the socks that I started. Oh, and something else that's kind of fun. Okay, do you see these little purple things at the end? Another one of my local yarn shops, okay, the one up north isn't like local local, but it's local like in the same state. So this other yarn shop, the Yarnery, had a New Year's sale, and so there were a couple of items that I wanted slash needed, and one of them I wanted to try was this tubing. And now a lot of people have been talking about this tubing and honestly, I didn't, I didn't think it was like all that, like the hype was all that because I often use interchangeable needles when I'm knitting my sweaters. And so if I wanna try something on, I can just connect, use a connector, attach a longer cord and then try it on and then like pull it through and then take out that connector and then put my needle back on. And so for trying on things, it's really easy. For the tubing, a lot of people say what's nice is that you connect the tubing to the end of a needle. I'll show it here on these, just on one needle, and then you can slide it through, try on your garment when you're done, slide it back through, attach your needle. Now I did try that, but I felt like it kept catching because the join between the tubing and the needle isn't going to be smooth, which is fine, but I kept worrying about it coming off. And you can get it on pretty tight, so it's not really a big deal, but I just felt like my system with the interchangeables was working just fine, so I didn't really need it for that. But I was curious, and I gave it a, I gave it a try. You can also use it when you're doing like, um, when you're separating your body stitches from your sleeve stitches, and then you can put that on hold, sliding it through, tie a knot, and then when you're ready to put your needles back on, you just put your needle onto the end, pull it through, and you're ready to go. 
A lot of times for me, when I do my body sleeve separations, I'll just put it on like the shortest cables, which are like 12 or 16 inches, put the stoppers on it, and then when I'm ready to knit, I'll just attach my short needles back on and do it. And so again, that part didn't end up making a big difference for me, but I could do that if I use the tubing if I wanted to. But something I found kind of nice is that if I cut just like a short amount, uh, I might have made these slightly too short. This is like an inch and a half or so maybe. If you do two inches, it might be a little bit better. I mean, that's fine, but you can attach it to the US-1 needles and keep your stitches from falling off, which is really great because there are these other ones that I've used, but I, they're not, the hole's not small enough for the US-1 needles, and so they just come off. And I have these other ones that I have that are like kind of like a cone shaped, but those don't always stay on very well either. And so this has been great. Like I'm gonna tug at it right now and it's not, it's not really coming off. So I have to like really tug it to get it to come off. So yeah, this is maybe like one and a quarter inches. I would probably recommend cutting it just slightly longer if you want to, but honestly, this is just fine too. So I've got those as my stoppers. <laughs> which I think is actually really nice. And it doesn't take up a lot of space and it does the job. So here are my socks. These are for our older daughter. She's, um, yeah, I think these are the older ones. Okay, she's 10. And I cast on 56 stitches for her and I'm knitting them cuffed down like I usually do. The progress keepers on there I made from charms that I bought at Michael's. And so this one says sweet and this one says okay and I just have like a round lover back um, closure on it. I don't know if it's focusing here. I really like how the colors are fading. I love the marling that's going on. It is super fun. And then I have light bulb stitch markers attached so I can mark every 10 rounds so I make sure the socks are the same length. And then I've got this really cute little heart um, stitch marker on there that's by Maria of Woolen Forest or Forest Charm. I have a, another yarn that I wound to put in the bag in case I want to do a contrast. This is this bright pink. I think it's a Warkshire Spinners yarn, which is a super, oops, super hard wearing heavy duty yarn. My kids wear their socks in their tennis shoes and rub their feet around all over the floor and they're well-worn and well-loved. So I like to use <laughs> hard-wearing uh, yarn. And yeah, so I don't know if I'm gonna do that contrast yet, but it's there if I want it. I'm going to share with you the next pair. And these are for our seven-year-old. And for her, I cast on 52 stitches. And her yarn, again, is the Zauber Ball, but a different colorway that she picked out. And this one I wound on um, with the yarn winder. So they're in two cakes instead of balls. And this one's so cool. It is like a dark purple and magenta marling fade. I did not start them at the same spot either because it's just fun that way. And I'm gonna hold up the cuffs that I started. Here we go. The fading is so pretty, it's very magical. And for this one, I did a knit one purl one rib for 15 rounds. Oh, on the other one I did knit two purl two for 20 rounds, I think, just because, no particular reason. And I think I'm gonna knit both of their socks about crew length. I haven't decided on what type of heel I wanna do yet, if I wanna do a heel flap and gusset or a shadow wrap heel, we'll just, See what I feel like doing when I get to that point. But yes, I think that is all the projects that I wanted to share with you today. I'm just looking around to make sure I didn't miss anything. And yeah, let's move on to Eats and Reads. We are on to the Eats and Reads section. And I have a quick overview about the books. So I uh, finished Divine Rivals, loved it. It's a book by Rebecca Ross, first book of a duology, and I am on the waitlist for the second book. I get 
the majority of my books from the library. I think I, think I am number 10 on seven copies, so hopefully next week. I don't know. I, I really, really want to read the second book. Uh, I don't think I did a very good job explaining like the overview synopsis of what the book is about in the previous episode. I, I try really hard not to have spoilers and then it's really hard for me to figure out how to talk about a book without giving spoilers. So oftentimes I'll focus on the writer's style and maybe how the book makes me feel or why I decided not to finish a book. And that works pretty well, I think, for me anyway. So Divine Rivals, uh, the set setting I think is like early 1900s. We're looking at two journalists who are in their, I think, late teens. I don't believe they're in their early 20s yet, like 18, 19, somewhere in there. And they start out as rivals and then things change and they are reporting on this like battle of the gods where mortals are involved in fighting the battle and there are family secrets and you talk about relationships and you talk about like self-growth and discovery and there's just a lot of all that stuff in there and I really enjoy it. It is a fantasy, fantasy romance, young adult, like older young adult fiction and I enjoyed the magic, I enjoyed the banter and I, I like Rebecca Ross's writing style. She is a new to me author and I'm really enjoying her writing. I'm currently reading another book by her, second book in another duology. I think it's called An Endless Fire, Fire Endless, something like that. I'll have a picture of the book cover here on the screen. I'm about halfway through, maybe a little more than halfway through. And yeah, so I'm reading that right now. As far as bakes go, I brought over two cookbooks. They're both by Smitten Kitchen, who is Deb Perlman. I have been following her since before she wrote cookbooks. I was following her on her blog. She cooks out of a kitchen in New York and is like a no fuss type of cook, which is what I like. And the reason I mention the small kitchen out of New York is that she oftentimes will say like, hey, you don't need all those gadgety things because they just take a lot of space. And she's like, I don't have a ton of those little gadgety things because they take up a lot of space. And uh, yeah, so I just, I appreciate her also for the um, substitutes that she'll often mention. Like, hey, if you don't have this, sub this. If you don't have this, sub this. And it doesn't really matter. It'll be just fine. And I appreciate that kind of cooking because that's how I cook. The reason I brought over these two books is because I made a, I think it's through this one, a pie. I've been making a lot of pies recently. And there is a butter crust, all butter flaky pie crust recipe in this cookbook here. And I tried it out for the first time and it worked really well, so good and I made a strawberry rhubarb pie. I'll put a picture of that here on the screen and it was delicious, loved it. I think that's going to be my go-to pie crust. A lot of other pie crusts will use like vegetable shortening, which I never have at home, but I usually have butter, so there you go. The other thing I made was a lemon cake and that's in her new cookbook. And <laughs> the one thing I will say is that I have all three of her cookbooks and they're not necessarily by theme. They're all like classics, fun things, but then it makes it really hard for me to find a recipe because I won't know which one it came out of. So I've been starting to tab things. I don't think it's in this one, but I've been starting to tab things with small post-its that just write what it is on the outside for the ones that I tend to use a lot. That way it's much easier for me to just look down the side of the book to see which book I need for what recipe. Because otherwise I'm flipping through all three in the index index looking for a certain recipe where it's probably on the third book that I look at because that's usually how it goes, right? But yeah, they're all kind of the same in the sense that they're all like great, fuss-free, bunch of different recipes that go through a bunch of different things like breakfast, lunch, dinner, um, desserts, things like that. Uh, yeah, but I really like them. And she does have a lot of stuff still online, but I love a good cookbook. I like looking at the pictures. I, I, I just really, I really like cookbooks. So we are on to the food for that section. Thank you so much for sticking around if you are still here. And if you've jumped around because I do include timestamps, which I did mention in the beginning, 
and now it's too late to say that, but hopefully you figured it out if you haven't already. But thank you for sticking around. We're at the very end of the episode, and I did have some thoughts earlier in this week, but since I didn't write them down, I don't know where they are anymore. But I did have one thing I wanted to share, which is how good a like laugh until you cry session can be. Session's probably not the right word. But laughing so hard that your stomach hurts or laughing so hard that you literally have tears in your eyes. Like, when's the last time you did that? Really, when is the last time you did that? Was it this morning? Was it last week? Was it months ago? Do you not even remember? Those kind of laughs, I feel like, fill my cup. Like, they just, it's just so, it's just so good. It, and that kind of feeling, I feel like there's no set word to really describe it, but it like, Fulfilling isn't even the right word. I feel like fulfilling is much calmer than that kind of like belly aching, rolling on the floor laughing. But yeah, when's the last time you did that? Um, if you want to share what was so funny, feel free to share. But remember, this is the World Wide Web and whatever you put on the internet will be out there in this vast black hole of the internet. So if you don't really feel like you want to share that, don't share it, you don't have to. You can just say yes, that you've had one of those laughs recently. But if you do want to share, feel free to share as well. I feel like I've had a couple of those in the last like several weeks or so. I can't remember exactly what they are right now, but I know they made me feel really good and it was just so funny. And I, I just can't, yeah, I can't even think of what they are right now. Otherwise I'd probably share them with you. I just, I don't remember, but yeah. So have you had one of those wonderful laughs lately? And if you care to share your story or remember what it is, feel free to comment it uh, below. And I do encourage people to read each other's comments. I feel like there's a lot to learn from one another. There's a lot you can do to support one another or like each other's comments or mention something um, on their comments or whatever the case may be. So I hope you are doing well. Cheers to being creative. I hope you are taking good care of yourselves, your loved ones, and your neighbors, and I will talk to you next time.